Right, good morning. Attempt three from a vertical Rachel because for some reason Facebook won't do it the other way this morning. Haven't got a clue why. So <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, folks. Uh, if you were uh, hoping to tune in live, um, otherwise all of this is, is rather not, not to be worried about. But um, anyway, I'm here. I hope you're here too at some point today. Um, so Monday morning, morning prayer for the 11th, um, I'm going to use one of the optional psalms, which is Psalm 30. Um, and then we're going to look at what is quite a nasty passage, and you'll see why when we get there. Matthew 14, 1 to 12, not for the faint hearted. Good morning, Barbara. Somebody is here keeping me company and coping with my strange technology stresses this morning. Um, right. Let's take a moment of quiet, <coughs> if the vocal cords allow. Getting to that stage of Christmas. Advent, but you know what I mean. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory for ever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us, to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. And so we pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you have healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored me to life from among those that go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his, give thanks to his holy name. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord, of your goodness have made my hill so strong. Then you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord I made my supplications. What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever.
Lord, we give you thanks for your faithfulness and your goodness to us. We pray, Lord, that we might be strengthened, encouraged and given your purpose to do this day, this week and throughout our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, Matthew 14, starting at verse 1. So I'm just trying to move this slightly because oh, I can't see my scripture, which will make it a bit difficult, won't it? So, at that time, Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison, on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had been telling him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Though Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd, because they regarded him as a prophet, John that is. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, and she pleased Herod so much that he promised on oath to grant her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. The king was grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison. The head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, who brought it to her mother. John's disciples came and took the body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. A fairly gruesome passage for a Monday morning, really, isn't it? Um, so when I looked at this first thing, I thought, well, do I stick with it? It's the listed passage for morning prayer in common worship today. Do I go somewhere else? And then I had a look at um, some Bible reading notes I have. And it talked about fear. What do we fear? What did Herod fear? Herod feared his wife, well, his brother's wife. He feared the crowd. He feared breaking an oath. He feared most things in this passage. He doesn't like being told that he's doing the wrong thing, for starters. Which is why he arrests John and then, because he doesn't like populist crowds getting hot under the collar, he doesn't do anything about it until uh, Herodias um, and her daughter sort of force the issue. doesn't like to lose face he fears losing face whether it be with the crowds whether it be with his wife whether it be with his guests um, before whom he'd made um, the, the oaths what therefore do we take from all that there's something here about what we fear we need to make sure that our actions have integrity with Jesus's teaching, uh, that we are not led into the, the sin of making one mistake after another. Because if you make a, a decision based on fear, it's more than likely to be the wrong one. 
Um, and once you've done that, things have a tendency of getting worse. He could have acted very differently. He could indeed have inquired of John more about why it was that he thought his, um, why John thought Herod's actions were inappropriate. He could even have gone to Jesus when he heard about him and not assigned uh, something to him that wasn't true. Uh, no, Jesus was not John the Baptist raised from the dead. He could have actually gone and talked to Jesus or at least listened to him, tried to understand the relationship between what John the Baptist was saying and doing seeking, uh, encouraging Israel to seek uh, repentance um, or he could have gone to Jesus and he did neither of those things. So we need, we need to be careful not to do things out of fear, especially fear of loss of face. The only person we need to fear and in the other sense of the word, is God. We need to honour him. We need to worship him. And in that sense, live in fear of Christ. Um, it's a slightly different meaning to the word, isn't it? So hopefully, we are not living in fear. We're certainly not living in fear of our lives, as some do this, this morning. But hopefully we aren't making decisions based on fear. We need to have integrity between uh, our faith and the decisions and actions that we take and make. Now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. And so we say together the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So we turn to a time of prayer, interceding not just for ourselves but for others. Lord, we give you thanks that we have no need to live in fear for our lives from external forces, from rulers and powers. We pray for ourselves that we 
can withstand making judgments and decisions and taking actions based on fear. Whatever that fear might be, fear of change, fear of the future, fear of the past. Lord, give us integrity in our actions and decisions that they might fit with your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those who do live in fear, who cannot profess their faith in you openly, who live in zones of conflict, where they fear the next shell, the next gunshot, or fear that they will starve. Lord, we pray for all those areas known to us where this is true. Asking that you, in your power, can break through to bring peace, Lord. We recognise there is so many um, historic details and vested interests in so many of these uh, international conflicts. And we see in them an echo of Herod's desire to keep hold of power at the cost of innocent lives. And so we pray, Lord, for your protection. For strength. The sort of strength we probably can't even grasp in our lives. For faith. For courage, for hope. And ask that you give those things to your faithful soldiers and servants, wherever they are, whatever the fear they live in today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who go with aid agencies, with reconciliation work, and enter into these conflict zones. who take risks despite their fears to bring aid to those who need it most. Pour out your healing and your hope on the, all those in prison, whatever their crime, or in fact, if there is none. Lord, help people to see the light, the light of hope that comes by faith in Jesus Christ. So that they, unlike Herod, might change their ways, find new lives, new futures, a new courage to be truthful and to trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our communities at this Christmas time after a very busy weekend where many gathered together to hear the story of your birth. 
when you came in humility as a tiny baby. We pray that those, all those who heard that message might accept you as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those known to us who are ill at this time. Bring healing to them, Lord. Give insight to those who care for them, patience and purpose. Help them to be free of pain and discomfort. Where sleep is the best healer, help them to sleep. And Lord, in this last week of the school term, we pray for all our children and their teachers in the myriad things that need to be accomplished and those things that provide easy distraction. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. this week almighty God purify our hearts and minds that when your son Jesus Christ comes again as judge and saviour we may be ready to receive him who is our Lord and our God and so we pray with confidence our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it's been lovely to be with you. I'm sorry the tech gave us a, a poor start and it's it's played up a bit during the course of prayers, which is why I might have seemed slightly distracted as well. Different tech played up in a different way. It's going to be one of those days, I can tell. Hope to see you soon. Um, next Monday, um, this week and next week, we're going to do prayers as normal and then we will take a break from morning prayer from the 25th to the 1st inclusive. But I'll put that in the newsletter for those who get it. Go well. God bless. <laughs>